So for reaching 400 subscribers, I decided to do another pet unboxing video for you guys. So make sure you stay tuned to find out what it is. What's going on guys? My name is Josue from Most Ways Exotics and if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I make videos about care and give you tips on how to keep reptiles and amphibians and also I do herping vlogs. So if you want to learn more about reptiles and amphibians, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. That way you can keep up with all the latest information. So what I have for you today in the container is what is normally known as a house gecko or more commonly known as like a Mediterranean gecko or scientific name, a Hemidactylus frenatus. I have some links in the description if you guys want to check out some of those if you want to buy some for yourself. They're relatively small, they have pale skin with a couple dots around them. Uh, the skin's normally a little bit warty looking, uh, but they do have very large eyes since they're primarily nocturnal species. But they do make pretty great pets uh, considering their docile nature and definitely their ease of care how to take care of these guys. So as far as enclosures go for these little guys, uh, for one little gecko you could probably get a 10 gallon aquarium with a screen top and that would be perfectly fine. Really they say that you can pretty much do 5 gallons for one gecko and 10 gallons for two, but 10 gallons is definitely more than enough space for just one or whatever you decide to do. But in the future if you were thinking about upgrading them to a 20 gallon terrarium, that would definitely be a great option too, especially if you want to keep more than one in the whole tank. Primarily because these geckos do better in numbers, which is the case with a lot of different species like garter snakes, and that's probably the best reason why you want to have more than one of them. But the main thing is, if you're going to have two or more of these creatures in one, you want to make sure that you have males and females, and not just males and males living together, because generally they're territorial and they'll fight for the area with other males if they have them in the same enclosure. So for right now, what I have for my animal is, I just got this small plastic terrarium, and I plan on upgrading it to a bigger one in a little while, because I just recently came across a 29 gallon aquarium, and I'm going to redo my tree frog bioactive setup. If you want to see how I did the original one, you can look at this link I'm going to put over here on the right hand side of the screen, and you can come back to this video. So then after I get done with the tree frog setup, I'm going to probably move them into their 20 gallon tank and then move some other stuff around from there. Because this one will be free and then I have the other one. Maybe I'll put some baby garter snakes or something. These guys are primarily nocturnal. They don't really need any additional UVB lighting or anything like that. Uh, the most you're probably going to have to do is maybe get these guys a heat lamp or maybe a heat pad. Me, preferably, I like to use the heat pad. I think they're a little bit better uh, for reptiles in general uh, because a lot more species can thrive with underbelly heat than uh, heat from above. But a heat lamp is going to be just as efficient as a way to make sure your animal can thermoregulate, which is a very big thing among reptiles in general. During the daytime, from all the research that I've done, it says that uh, on the hot side of the terrarium, it could be around 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the cooler side, it can probably be around 80 degrees. So it's not that much of a big temperature gradient, but it needs still needs to be there for your animal uh, because that's a real important thing for them. Uh, but during the nighttime, it needs to be just a little bit cooler, so around 75 to 80 degrees on either side. So as far as uh, substrate and decor, it can probably be as simple and as fancy as however you want to make it. It just depends on what your personal preference is. A lot of people like to use paper towel and newspaper for substrate for their animals, which can be a good alternative to buying mulch and other things like that, which can be a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't give you the same naturalistic look. But it is easier to change out. Uh, normally I just use the Zoomed forest floor bedding and I mix it with a little bit of just regular pot and soil to help give it a more naturalistic look like I said before and it works out great for me. One thing that I've noticed about reptiles in general is to help them with their enrichment is to make like a high side and a low side so that way they have to walk up to get to the other side and it just helps to give them a little bit more exercise. And this is just a small tip that I use with a lot of my reptile enclosures so feel free to use it away. As far as the core goes, you can use naturalistic looking plants, or you can probably put them in a bioactive setup, which probably won't be too bad of an idea for these little guys. Since these guys like to climb a lot, uh, since they're normally found around houses and in cracks and crevices, I would definitely put a lot of enrichment inside of their enclosures. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure you smash that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you keep up with all the latest content.
These reptiles are primarily insectivores, so the majority of their meal is going to consist of mealworms, wax worms, crickets, roaches, or anything else they can possibly get in their little mouths. You can feed these little guys at least every other day and they'll be perfectly fine. One thing I would recommend to do is at least dust your crickets once a week with the Reptivite. I'll put a picture on the top right hand side of the screen over here. So that way you guys can get a good picture of what that is. And basically Reptivite is just minerals and things that the, they, nat they naturally can't get out in the wild since they're in an actual enclosure now. So that helps to make sure they can maintain all that essential stuff as well. As far as water for these guys, I would highly recommend that you buy a reptile mister and you mist your enclosure at least once a day so that way they can get a humidity increase and it helps keep everything good and moist inside of there and keep your humidity up. But since they are a tropical species, they actually need a fairly high humidity. Uh, from all the research that I've done online, it says that they need to be kept around 70 to 90% humidity which down in South Georgia is not going to be too hard since it's majorly 80% humidity down here anyway. Also another good reason why you should miss your enclosures now, if you put a water bowl inside of there, geckos normally don't drink out of water bowls. So generally in the morning times they drink the dew off of leaves and basically that's what you're simulating with the sprayer and the mister and all. And they'll definitely just drink off the side of the glass or wherever they happen to be at at the time. So if you guys would like to see more of my videos about some of my other animals, I'll put some links over here on the left side of the screen uh, to the next videos, and you can take a look at those. But other than that, thanks for watching.